Greetings, I'm Elijah. Welcome, Elijah. Thank you. I have come today to talk to you about something very important. Many of you have great missions, and many of you have great things that must be done, and you are examples to the world. But remember this, you cannot be the great example that you want to be without true prayer and true meditation. Remember that when you do stop to do your prayers and meditations, that they mean something to you, that you're not just reciting verses that you heard, but you're exactly putting thought into what you are saying, that you are bringing your heart into your prayer life, bringing your heart into your meditations so that they may actually work in a greater way. Not that if you say a prayer and do not mean it with your heart, that God does not hear it and accept that because you have taken your time and your effort to do so. However, when you put your heart and mind and soul and spirit into your meditations and into your prayers, they become something fresh and new every time. It is not that you are just saying words, but that you are actually communicating with God, that you are actually communicating with the spirits thereof and actually getting a response from them because they are feeling your heart. Now, some of you say, but I don't have a lot of time and there are days when I don't feel well and there are times when I'm this and that and the other thing are happening and my meditations are not as deep as I wish them to be. However, make them shorter, but make them work. Make them shorter, but make them work. It does not matter how long you pray. The Pharisees prayed for hours but they only prayed for hours so that everybody would see them praying. You understand that? But a short, meaningful, heartfelt prayer can go much farther than hours of just empty nothingness. It is the essence of your prayers that makes the difference. It is the essence of your prayers that will change your example. It is the essence of your prayers that will cause people to be healed, that will cause things to happen that are unexpected and that are miraculous. If you go around reciting a prayer, the same words every day and every time you pray, and they mean nothing to you, then how is this prayer really a good prayer unless you take that old prayer and bring new life to it when you're actually saying the words you're actually listening to what you're saying and bringing about new life for that prayer the lord's prayer for example many recite it but it's just blah 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 bring life to it listen to what you're saying bring your heart into it understand what the prayer is about so that you may be actually communicating with god and the spirits not that you're just mumbling words empty and meaningless of course god will bless your time that you've spent in prayer no matter how shallow it is, but make it work. Make it full. Make it meaningful. Bring your love to it. Because there are those out there that you're going to be praying for that you want to have some impact on with God's prayers, God's power. Ah. <sighs> I love when prayer is true. I love when prayer is full. I love when prayer 
has meaning and has action come to it because it is so meaningful because every time that it's meaningful actions will come to it in some way actions will come if it only to build your heart your faith your love toward god there is still a great action there when it's meaningful much love to all of you and i will if there is any questions i will take them but there usually isn't if there's any questions does anyone have a question um i'd like to say thank you elijah all of your messages are always so on the money and and really important to hear and to clarify things and so i wow. i take i take them very much to heart every time you speak so thank you very much thank you yeah. and much love and many blessings to you thank you um ava has a question go ahead ava hi elijah um i have a question about karma i find out recently in a channeling session that unless uh, we don't feel if we don't feel guilty about doing something then karma is not created so my question is um there are people here on this planet who really commit horrible crimes against humanity and they actually enjoy killing does that mean that they do not create any karma how does it all work no they create their own karma by their actions the thing is there's dark karma and there's positive karma and if they create their dark karma out of joy of doing evil then that is a karma unto itself that is not positive but you see when it's not that you don't create karma when you don't do it when you're not doing something bad but you're creating a more positive karma the things that you do out of positivity create positive karma and not negative karma if you're doing something good for someone else or if you're doing something that is not a bad thing you're not creating bad karma but you're creating a more positive karma now these people that are negative and live in in that negative kind of reality they create their negative karma in many ways. So the karma of the world is created by all humanity together. Okay, I understand. So it's not just if we have emotions of guilt or not. Thank you. Also want to ask, because I'm trying not to harm anybody, including not to harm animals, but honestly speaking, <coughs> the invasion of ants, and I keep murdering them, feeling really weird about it. So how does that work now? Well, <laughs> remember that all, all creatures, all living things, return to energy once they are gone, and does, does an ant have a soul? I don't know. I will have to ask God about that when I see him. But I have a feeling that they don't. But we'll, But so they, that's a different kind of getting rid of. That's a problem. They are part of the food chain. They are part of nature and the, uh, the how things were made by God to work out correctly because without one animal or one insect or without uh, all the different things that exist, then things would be incomplete. So when you're getting rid of your ant problem, um, maybe you can sweep them out the door if you feel bad. Yeah, they're kind of tiny, so it's hard to catch them and release, but at least I am killing them very quickly. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right thank you so much <laughs> that's so cute um, okay um <laughs> i also can i can i add something 
that yeah. when people say things like karma's a bitch and everything, karma doesn't come to get people to satisfy an angry mob who is angry about what a person did. And right. people can, you know, that's that that judgment is also creating negative karma for the person who's screaming, karma's a bitch and karma's gonna get you. So I just yeah. want to bring that down. Exactly, out. because yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if you're screaming that, you, then you're not being positive, so you're creating negative karma. Exactly. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just still laughing. But I, uh, I, I was, Alex has I a question. Go ahead. A little bit delighted that she was not even uh, willing to kill an ant. So That's, that, I know. She's trying to catch and release. That's awesome. Catch and release is difficult. <laughs> a broom might be a better solution. Yeah, or a piece of piece of candy. They can all just sort of candy, keep. leave them out the door. Yes, that's right. Okay, Alex, go ahead. Yeah, hello. I just uh, want want to say thank you, Elijah, for what uh, you do. You're welcome. And uh, I have a question. If yeah. you want to to share uh, your last day. Uh, before the uh, uh, ascension, and uh, how did that work, or was it, what did you feel in that moment? I, I didn't catch the question. Oh, the Can you explain? Yes, yeah. yes, the transition in the body of light. Uh, how how it was? What did you feel? Oh, I, when you do the trans, when you transition like that. You feel only the love of God. You feel every molecule of your body on fire for God with joy, with love, with understanding. Um, it's ecstasy, really. So you you become one, but you also have your, um, let's say, persona, like uh, consciousness. Of course. It's just being in the proximity of God when he does something of that nature that you feel so close and so joyful because he is he's in, in such close proximity to you you just feel that great delight and joy and it's hard to it's beyond your wildest understanding of ecstasy yeah maybe not but i can i can have the glimpse of that yes yeah. thank Absolutely. you thank you very much thank you very much much love to you all Thank you. And and there's another one more question, if if we may. Yes. See the karma of you saying you did not get any questions. Now you're getting all the questions. Uh, Don has a question. Go ahead. Blessings, Elijah. Blessings. I would like to know. Uh, recently, like about within three weeks ago, there was a number of octopus that got out and walked on land. What seemed almost like a major protest. Can you give me a? <laughs> uh reason for their exodus from the ocean yes there was there was something that was uh, attacking them or or something in the water that was harming them they felt uncomfortable they did not feel a welcome in the water at that time and that is why they did it was and, it oh, yes. sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead well i was going to say um I had opened some portals up with the oceans of the Milky Way galaxy uh, a few months ago to try to remove some of the radiation from the Pacific. But anyway, I was just wondering if uh, something had migrated in. No, n nothing like that. Uh, but yes, the radiation is harmful to all the every species. So. If they came in contact with a, you see, and when uh, radiation can uh, travel differently in water than it does in on land, so they might have gotten a very big uh, amount of it in a current or something of that nature and decided to walk out of that area. So I cannot tell you exactly what they experienced, but I can tell you it wasn't comfortable. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Blessings. Blessings. Okay, thank you. Is there any other questions in this room or? Oh, Ava has another question. Go ahead, Ava. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, different question. And I think uh, 
Alexis started talking a little bit about it, which brought my question. We are on this planet, we are quite afraid of dying. There are a lot of people who are basically terrifying by the idea, but how is I would assume that dying might be actually a pleasure since it's so normal. Can you can you give us a little clue? How does it feel to die or leave a physical body? Well, it feels it doesn't you don't don't feel it at all actually. Um, when people have uh, look at the near death experiences that you have uh, you can read about, they don't talk about feeling leaving their body, but they feel that they have left and they can see their body sometimes and they're heading toward the light and they're seeing relatives that look much younger and uh, than they did when they passed on. They're experiencing the beginnings of uh, the afterlife without actually being a part of it. So they're feeling actually nothing but positivity because their energy is moving into a different place it's just moving from one place to another it's not painful it's not it's not um it's just natural they're going through the veil they're heading toward eternity and so when they get to eternity that's when they start feeling something Thank you so much. Can I can I add something? Of course. <clears throat> when I was six years old, um, I died in a pool. I was uh, swimming uh, at a pool party, and there was a little girl that was holding on to the side of the pool because she couldn't swim. And at one moment, and she would sort of kick off from the, the side and then grab on again. And one time, she kicked back too much. And when she went to grab the side of the pool, she couldn't grab it, so she grabbed me and we went under and they pulled me off the bottom of the pool and <clears throat> the only thing that i remember is i remember and and this is one of the most vivid memories that i have in, in my lifetime is that there was a moment where i stopped struggling there was the confusion of why am i not able to get my head above water and then there was the moment of letting go and just relaxing and then waking up in a different place. So it was like I closed my eyes in the pool and then I woke up somewhere else. And there was no pain. There was only the moment before and then the moment after. Correct. And there was no yeah. sensation whatsoever. Excuse me? There was no sensation whatsoever. It was not of dying. There was no, the sensation of, of letting go. There was a exactly. sensation of relaxing into the, relaxing into the struggle and then and, and very much simple. making up where I was. Yeah. Well, you yeah. didn't quite make it to the other side. So no. you have a near death experience, they sort of brought you back before you had the uh, chance to. Yeah. I was that. standing in a little white room and I was standing there and I had the experience of waiting. And <laughs> then the next thing I knew I was back on the side of the pool choking up water so yeah yes they knew you were coming back so they didn't send you on yeah yeah so oh there's a comment here our society has input uh into us a fear of death because it is unknown and so people uh, hold on to that as yeah. they're nearing the end of their life and so it's the fear that of <clears throat> what's going to happen well, yeah. fear is what uh, everything is manipulated by on this planet. Mm. If, if you take away the fear in your heart about things, they couldn't manipulate you. They couldn't make you do what they want you to do. There would be no manipulation whatsoever. You would know exactly what you wanted to do. But with fear, they can take that fear and twist it and make you do what they want you to do because they threaten you with that fearful thought. So think about that. Be fearless and you will have more of your identity and, and you will have less, 
you will be less controlled by other things. Mm. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Christine had one more question. Yeah, I'm surprised there has been. <laughs> See, it's your karma. It's the subject, yes. Um, I was wondering when you're speaking of death and the fear of death and whatnot, my um, compassion and um, a lot of my, peer, my um, prayers go out to um, people who are being tortured and um, children who are starving to death or, you know, going through all these little pain or being abused. And I know that some um, escape through, um, some escape through creating other alternative um, uh, characters, multiple personalities. Um, but what about um, people who are being tortured? Like we hear a lot about women who are being tortured. Well, I hear a lot about women being tortured because they're standing up for um, uh, women's freedom in Israel, or not Israel, but you know, in various places like that. Do they separate from their body so that they're not feeling the pain? Actually, they're courageous and they're standing up for what they believe and they know that they will make a difference. They do feel the pain. It might be not be as harsh as it would otherwise because they are in their faith. They are giving themselves over to God. They're giving themselves to the cause and they know that it is right and as you give yourself to causes that you know that are right it's not that you don't feel the pain it's not that but you know that what you are doing will change the world in some way and that is why they endure it wow i was hoping it would be sort of like um sometimes when people are in accidents um, they don't really feel the thing of accidents. They um, separate from their bodies immediately. Yes. But and, understand this. Okay. Without the pain, yes. would there be any true change? Without that sacrifice, what if they weren't giving, of, if they weren't feeling anything, if they weren't, sacrificing for their cause, then mm -hmm. people would see that they weren't feeling that pain. People would see, oh, they're just, nothing's really happening. But to know that somebody is suffering for what they believe to that extent changes the way people think and the way people act. And that is why they are standing and being courageous for these causes because they know that people will see what they are doing and it will change. Some will be more afraid, but they will know that these people are courageous and that they are doing it to help them, those that are being, uh, that are under prison-like conditions and cannot escape from them. But you see, these people will, in effect, help help them in the long run. What about the people who are doing the um, um, torturing? I mean, they can't be unaffected. They are not unaffected. They are not unaffected. But they also believe in their cause. But um. they also see how much these people believe in their cause and they guess what realize that they would not put themselves in that place because they they do not believe in their cause enough to do that if they were put in the same place they would not do the same thing yeah i have no doubt <laughs> Thank so you very that much. affects the way people think, the way uh -huh. people are, and the way people act. And after it was over, they say, you know, maybe, maybe they were right. Because they believed way more than I did in that cause. And they believed so strongly that they allowed themselves to either 
to have this torture or even die. So that changes a thought process for sure. Well, what about the person that's ordering it, like um, the king or the prince or whatever the heck he is? In okay. some that is a karma, and they will pay for their judgment because uh -huh. judge not lest you be judged. So they have uh, the afterlife to look at that kind of thing. But God is looking for a more positive things. But during your life review, these things will be definitely gone over many times. So I don't know exactly how God works that because I've only been through my own reviews, but I know that there are some reviews that are very severe. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Can I, 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 this is an interesting conversation. I, I had a very beautiful conversation with my friend yesterday um, who has been on the webinar before. Her name's Crystal. She left sort of the spiritual world doing like psychic work and stuff like that to go and work with severely mentally ill people. And she's working with intake. Yeah. And she was talking about the psychology of a, of a psychopath who does not have the capacity to have any empathy whatsoever who's operating, and she used the description, slightly above a reptilian, because their only motivation is to get what they want, and they will do whatever they need to do, which includes, in the most severe cases, violence and w without empathy, only because they're trying to satisfy their own needs, and they, they truly don't care, and they cannot, they, they don't do not physically have the capacity to be rehabilitated in any way shape they, or form. they are not mentally in this dimension I no and they're and they are she said what was very interesting because she's also you know very spiritual and she knows that everybody that exists exists because it's god expressing himself in another way and she just said i don't believe that they she says i believe they're a different species of human that are not well, because of their incapacity to feel. They're more like what the greys are used to be described as, as opposed to... Well, uh, they are not completely in this dimension. They right. are not completely connected to right. your reality. Right. So therefore, they are not experiencing exactly what you're experiencing. Right. All of their experiences are in another a way. They see right. things totally differently. They experience things totally differently. Right. And have been deprived of some of the emotions that right. normal people would have and some of the normal thought processes right. that come into normal actions. So right. they are actually living in a slightly different dimension or yes. on the precipice of a yep. different dimension of thought and actions and can do not have the same kind of karmic reactions that you would have and it, it's very difficult to tell you about what they are experiencing because you couldn't relate to it because they can't relate to yours exactly yeah so that's a whole another conversation but it just it seemed apropos at the moment that's a very unusual area to go to but yeah. it is one that is important in this day and age because mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that come to uh to face some of these people yeah yeah so yeah <laughs> different conversation yes, so, it is. yeah was there any other questions from anyone else or i didn't see i must go questions? now I, oh. I i will not answer any other questions Okay, well, thank you very much, Elijah. I am. I was not meant to be here this long, so mm. I am going to uh, pass the baton to someone else. All right, thank you. Much love. Much love.